All right, I am here with one of the sickest forerunners I've ever seen. And if you don't know the man you see in your frame right now, this is Richie from Jailbreak Overlander. And uh, we met up here in Southern California. We're at Cars and Coffee. The show's over, and I gotta say, this truck was a showstopper. I've actually come to Cars and Coffee for a couple years now, and I haven't seen so many people stop and ask questions and look at this truck. I'm blown away. It, so, it, first of all, Jamie, I said this off camera, I'll say it again. Over the years, I've had everybody invite me every place, and I never show up. I never show up. When you hit me up, I wanted to meet you just because I respect the fact that you have some of the sickest Land Cruisers I've ever seen on YouTube. You know what I mean? And I had to meet you, and I'm glad I did. Well, thank you, brother. <laughs> People stopping that. and checking out the Forerunner the way they did, that freaked me out. I did not see that coming. You know. I was surprised. I saw your reaction. I'm like, isn't he used to this attention with this truck? Well, especially with the Green Monster, which is your legendary 80 series that you've been coast to coast like multiple times. Like a couple dozen times. A couple yeah. dozen times. 200,000. 200,000 miles under the belt. That's insane. Yeah. Well, let's get let's get to the meat and potatoes here. All right. Um, this truck is just insane. So, year? It's a 2019 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro and everything that made it a TRD Pro I ripped out so it was kind of a waste of money on that but <laughs> you live and learn of course you you richified it I did you, uh, pretty bad well let's let's uh, let me just get a, a pan out here like just look at this thing and this is this is like not even cleaned. We no. didn't we didn't prep for this. No, this is no, just no. You, you what you see is what you get. This is straight off the road after uh, you you were road. at Calico, right? Seven months. I've been on the road for a long time. Seven months. Yep. But you got the gear. You got a rolling hotel. I do, for the most part. Take any trail, for the most part. All right. Well, let's start with suspension. You got thirty sevens. I got. I just put thirty sevens on it. It's got Dobinson coils in the back that still can't quite hold up the weight of the truck, but we're working on it. King shocks all the way around. They're uh, remote reservoir adjustable, etc. And the one piece that this truck is missing is the Dana 60 rear axle that's being built right now, and then it will be done. But this is what freaks people out. Triple bypass, secondary shocks. King coil overs in the front, and it's a total chaos plus two long travel. Wow, yeah, triple bypass forerunner. You don't see that every day. No, a lot of the Jeep guys do this. Um, what, what did you have in the Green Monster? Your I 80. had King uh, adjustables, that was it. It was a different suspension, it was a lot easier to deal with. This was a lot of work. We had to pull out the factory steering rack and put a tundra steering rack in and then brace the frame absolutely everywhere this truck is not breaking it's been braced big time everything everything was built exactly correctly not all by my hand i built the truck and then i had another shop put the steering rack in for me because i needed i wanted a real welder welding everything and that's not me well because you came from the world of solid axle massive amount of flex because that's just solid axles can do that and you had it built beyond belief yes, yep. to now a IFS system that, has that you are breaking points. breaking points but you wanted to have the the flexibility that you were accustomed to in your yes. 80 I tried to make a forerunner into an 80 and it's a tough one <laughs> it's, a, it's never going to be an 80 and an 80 is never going to be a forerunner yeah hopefully I'm in the middle and I did some pretty radical modifications to get me there hopefully so Aftermarket lights. Everything's aftermarket. Nothing on this is stock except the steering wheel and the driver's seat. And you always do the nice Baja, I know. Yeah, I got Baja there. designs and rigids. And Metal Tech got me this bumper, and they told me I couldn't fit a 10,000 pound winch in there, but I did. So it was hard to do, but there's a worn uh, Xeon in there. I do a little grinding, a little cutting. Everything fit. Man, oh man. It's the same. It's the same. The same roof system off the 80 series is on this one. I made it work. And the rear drawers is right out of the 80. I made it work. So Oh, really? Okay. There's a couple of things that were push-pull, which was kind of cool. And I did do videos on every single thing I did as I modified this in my driveway in the winter. 
I've just never actually done a walk around video, so I haven't released any of them yet. You're the king of the DIY, <laughs> but heavy duty. No, I'm honored if I'm the first video of a walk around of it this. Is. this well, beast. Mike, last line of defense, did one, but he didn't yeah. do it. It wasn't like this. Yeah. It didn't have dual cases. It didn't have long travel. It wasn't on 37, so it's a totally different truck. Hey, if I, if I can do a one up video on Mike from LLOD, man, I, that's a check mark in my box. Yeah, we both agreed. <laughs> Mike is a really, really genuinely good guy. Man. Yeah, absolutely. But it didn't have triple bypasses. It wasn't on 37s, and now it has four shifters because it has dual transfer cases. Dual transfer cases. Marlin, Marlin, Marlin crawler. crawler. Yep. Love the Marlin. Yep. yep. Does the truck have a name? It doesn't. Not yet? It doesn't. Okay. There's, there's been a few names bandied about. Black and Blue by you. Um, double Shot. I don't know. Green Monster, my ex named it. Yeah. I'm from Boston, the Green Monster at Fenway. And it was a Green Monster. So. Absolutely. The you name. You the hood for you? Yeah, that's, let's check it out. I'm sure everybody's been waiting for that moment. This is insane. Yeah, but we're and about I did to all see. this myself. And I made, a, I made a video on how to do this yourself. How to install a Magnuson in a 5th gen or a V6. Step by step by step by step. Everything here except this wiring was done by me. I had a shop throw that in when I was on the road. I needed a transmission cooler bad. We're going to put links too in the description. So on the different videos of this truck on, on uh, Richie's channel, Jailbreak Overlander. I changed out oh. the radiator. I put a CSF in here instead of the Toyota. Okay. And aluminum. still, yep, it's all aluminum. It does cool the truck better, but it doesn't cool the transmission better. So I ended up running a 25-row fan-assisted derail transmission cooler in the back where my spare used to be, under the truck, because I got no more room in here. Because I've got the intercooler for the supercharger in here. I've got the winch in here. There's a lot of there's not a lot of room, so I had to go with the remote. Got it. I had to move the windshield wiper re reservoir because it hung down. You could see it from the front of the truck. It looked terrible. It looked like, a, looked like a, someone missing a front tooth. You ever seen something like that? <laughs> you know? And uh, pretty much it. I put the Bantam X S pod in here, which I thought was amazing because coming from an 80 series, every wire went right through my firewall. Yeah. One wire, everything goes right here. It's pretty badass. So I didn't know about that. And I just had an alarm put in. They just left that right there for me. I just noticed that. I'll clean that up. I use American made wires and I cover my joints. See that? That's not, that wasn't me. Got it. You'll clean that up. I will. I yeah. will. It's a point of failure. So, and then what? Like the pick up and go in this thing. It's day, day and night. Driving this just with the V6 after driving the 80 for seven years. The 80 was supercharged, but I mean you've driven 80s. They're never. They were never made to be fast. They were made to go forever. Yeah. And they do. Driving this without the supercharger was like driving a sports car. And then when I supercharge it, now it's just ridiculous. Wow. So I supercharged it and it's got 488s in it. And the reason I didn't go 529 is because it's supercharged. Yeah, you don't need to. And now I got two transfer cases. So if I need low, I can go really, really low. So I think I covered my bases. And it, one of these, this is a one of right now. But my buddy standing behind you is building the same truck, identical. So it'll only be a one of for a, for a couple more weeks. But it, it, it is what it is. Nice. Sweet and yeah. and fresh off of the Calico Mines trails too. Yeah, so. that was a great trail. You sent me some links to that. I had already rolled out of there because a huge storm came in. Yeah, I did not want to get stuck out there with a deluge coming down. And that's hell, what happened. Hell so. no, Richie's crazy. I mean, he'll go out with a crew, but sometimes he's like, hell, I'll just go out on my own. I usually <laughs> go out on my own. Yeah. yeah. So, well, what let's else take a show you here? let's take a look at the interior. Maybe pop the door. You bet. You bet. Most people that do a tra an extra transfer case end up having a shifter coming up right here or in the console. I went to a company called Northwest Fabs and they sold me this Trident shifter, which allowed me to put the transfer case shifters exactly where Toyota put them. So all three of my shifters, I can shift this in the two wheel low now. Wow. Everything is right in the factory spot. I didn't disturb anything, and that was important. I didn't want to make it look any different than Toyota already did. You know what I mean? I just want to get another vantage point. That's a point. good shot right That's... there. I, I've done that. This is worthwhile. All right. Look at that. And for the guys that complain that we're blocking our view, I put these very specific. So even this doesn't block my view. The worst yeah. thing that blocks my view is actually the hood. 
You so know what I mean? You're, you're, this is your viewpoint. That's right. Point. Yeah. yeah. Good call, brother. Yeah, I can still see everything. It doesn't obstruct my view. This is my scan gauge three, which if you have a vehicle, this tells you everything. Transmission temperature, that's what I wanted. And this just tells me where the hell I am. And this is for audio books. I don't listen, I'm too old to listen to the radio anymore, I guess. I listen to audio books incessantly. No, what a, what a setup that is. I know at the- Beautiful, I mean, car I didn't make it, but it's beautiful. Yeah, that is clean. At Cars and Coffee, people were poking their heads in like, what are all your shifters? And oh my God, what are you running? Well, that, it's that, cool because it separates the wheat from the chaff, so to speak, because when they see those and they know what they are, you know they know what they're looking at. Yeah. Some guys, this guy's got dual cases, yeah. Very cool. It is. Let me climb out of here. All right, I just crawled out of the back here because second row is removed. No no need, yeah. but look at this setup. So there's, there's a cover that goes over this, but it's off right now so everybody can see what we got but i know you're you're big on the safety gear anybody who wants to know about safety gear you are the guy because well, you you've injured yourself and I you've have, been in, I a, have in a pickle many many times but usually the first aid is for somebody else and i've rendered first aid to a lot of people on the trail because people go out without fire extinguishers and no first aid yeah you're out in the middle of nowhere you know so i don't mind it is what it is some people learn the hard way so that's but, how i ended up i ended up on inside edition a few weeks ago a couple of months ago because every time I'm at this particular place, Imogene Pass in Colorado, somebody oh. goes over and dies. Yeah. And it happened again. And there's those two late girls with the, yep. the... Sad, man. With a trail guide on top of it, which is... Yep. And a really beyond belief. Jeep. And the, where he went over, I don't know. It's just crazy. Yeah. All right. 1,500 watt pure sine wave, go power, the old school version with the intercooler fans. My Wii Boost cell phone booster. 200 amp hour uh, lithium battleborne batteries and those are powered off the the alternator obviously or the two uh, Merlin solar panels that are on top and like I said this is all enclosed so everything yeah. usually you can't see back here because I've got spare parts I got my cameras my drones my clothes but in the back that's where I open up every night and that's where I live out of so that's where all the provisions are that's it now this and is I got a red arc red arc uh, 1250 pumping the juice down the here to everything yeah and a spare just in case because you never know Karen the spare now this is clean because you have a ton of storage still here and you know this is again opened up so you can see it but uh, he's got like a um, magnetic cover that goes on top and I took advantage of these little seat mounting points and put these little straps so you can actually hook down to the seats to hold everything in the back is nothing's loose in case the truck ever went over I don't want to Hey, I lived, and then one of my cameras killed me, you know? Because <laughs> that would be the ultimate irony. And you're never wanting for electrical power. You, Negative. You've got no, all... I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I run a, uh, a Razor Blade Pro 17, two of them for editing. And just like Toyotas, they eat so much juice, it's ridiculous. I have nothing that's economical. <laughs> so, yeah, I needed these guys. Well, let's take a look at the back. All right, brother. Now, nobody's really seen this yet. These are badass. A buddy of mine, he's also a fellow YouTuber named Sandy Katz. He makes these, and I was amazed because I thought it was, I didn't really get it too much. This pump system, all the water you could possibly want. Because it's, I mean, it's grabbing it from the base. It's amazing. You yep. just hit a button, and it, the military boys, he ships so many of these overseas, it's insane. And they just buy the actual mechanism and put it on their own jugs. This is crazy. I mean, it's 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 hard. To that's explain. that's creature comforts for the trail. Big, big yep. time, you know. I usually carry a life jug back here because it filters the water for me. And you do the hand pump thing. So I got my Max Tracks, obviously. Nice. My diesel heater strapped up top. I don't ever use it, but I carry one just in case. So that's a self-contained unit, and it's it's a beast. It definitely. I've used that in my tent to test during a northeaster in Boston. 10 degrees below zero. It kept my alley cab at 50 degrees all day and used an inch of gas in eight hours. Really? Yeah, it's crazy, man. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it until about a year ago, but I never used it, but I still carry it, just in case. That's cool. I like the uh, the GP. These Handles are awesome. There. I, yep. mean, I use these on the 80, too. Yep. I think they're awesome. They make those for every, well, if you've got a spare tire, you can carry your Max tracks. 
Yeah, exactly. The GDM jugs. I used to carry two until somebody relieved me of them in Colorado Springs. Never had gas cans stolen, but. And your Max Rex on the back because you got the al alu cab up top. Yep. Yeah, which you just want to keep that clean. Plus, it's it's tough for me to get up there. I have my bike rack back here usually, so I just jump right up on that, pop my alley cap. Because of this wing, I have to have the alley cap pushed forward. So I actually, oh, yeah. it's, so it's can, not exactly awesome. And that yeah. thing's getting old. I've had it for four years. But um, I did a video on this a couple of years ago. I built this myself. And these are 500 pound slides. I never have any issues with it. It works like a champ. I used thin wall, lightest steel that was still strong that I could because making it out of just plywood was too heavy. And then I used a, a Dometic rail for this side. And I've been carrying this setup for years, even in my 80 series, and it works like a champ. Nice. You know, well, you did confide in me uh, that you're an ice cream eater. I baked that, dude. <laughs> that's, that's your vice. So. It, it is. I don't even know if there might be some. And you know, if you want ice cream on the trail, yeah, oh, that, it's uh, true. That's true. I'm not married. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I have My only vice is vaping, and I like ice cream at night. That's all right, man. So, but, and, but to have, like, you know, frozen ice cream on the trail, you got to have... Snowmaster, man. Yeah. I've had... This is my fourth fridge. I've had this one for three years. I beat the stuffing out of it, and it still works. And it works like a champ, actually. So, Snowmaster is a definitely a good setup. And this is my uh, Starlink. I told Mike from Last Line of Defense I'd do a review on it, and I haven't even used it. I've had it for six months. I've never used it. I pay for it, but I don't use it. So, that's how you connect to make all the magic. And kind of. It's actually this up. little guy right here. Okay. Local Me makes this. This is a 5G thing. You can pull a you can pull a signal and upload a substantial video pretty much anywhere. I've never actually taken that out of the box. You know, if you're going to be living off the grid in a fully built rig, Richie's the guy who <laughs> he's tried true. He's, he knows what works, what doesn't work, and this rig has all the stuff. I mean, our the, this planet can go on shutdown, and wow. the only thing left are going to be what do they always say? The roaches, and then of course. Uh, Richie driving and around the in this truck. Volt diesels, man. <laughs> and, uh, and maybe the maybe that diesel over there hiding in the back. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, this thing is just purpose built. You know, in the world of let's face it, when COVID hit, so many people got into overlanding. You were already doing it for years, years and years before that. So I mean, this is the real deal. Some people just outfit their rigs just to be cool. You're like, no, I outfit it to be functional shit's got to work it's, when i'm on my own and it's uh, 20 below and yeah, yeah <laughs> all this stuff has got to work at, for a purpose so it's my it's my life and i managed to I, thus far i've managed to pull it off i'm divorced long long time ago no wife no kids and in this day and age i don't see any advantage to I, I, I stay by myself, put it yeah. that way, for the most part. You know, I meet up with people here. I meet up with a lot of my subscribers, a couple of hundred thousand over the years. But I don't stay in one place very long. You hear of autonomous driving cars. This is uh, Richie's autonomous living vehicle. That's right. This is, can call. go anywhere. Good call. <laughs> Absolutely. But, well, that is awesome. Yeah, you're the first one to see it, man. No one's seen this as of yet. I mean, we just finished it. The other. It needs a Dana, Dana. East Coast Gear Supply is building me the rear end for it. Because of the weight of the truck and how I've set it up, I'm going to break those rear axles. So we're putting in a monster rear axle, and then it's done. It's done. It has to be done. I can't change the front end anymore. I haven't even owned it a year, and I've already done 40,000 miles in it. Yeah. And that's two months building it. So I've only driven it six. I drive. So, and those of you who don't know, I mean, you got to follow Richie because he's Toyota through and through. He had an 80 series, which was the most badass built 80 series ever. And he used it as we were talking about earlier. Now he's gone to the world of 4Runner. And for someone who entered 4Runner, probably you didn't know much about 4Runners because you were not. a Land Cruiser guy like me. at all. You jumped into it and now you are like the... I tried to make it into an 80. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what happened because when I drove it, I'm like, this is so fragile. Like, I'm going to break this just parking. So I started changing things and changing things. And I thought I was done. And then I found out that you can put a 200, you can put a Tundra rack in these for the steering to handle the tires. Yeah. You can put dual cases in it. No one's done it yet, but you can do it. Um, the long travel, the, the triple bypasses, I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know why I would need it. Once I found out, I got it done. So I ended up having that done at a shop 
out here on the west coast but and, uh, if anybody's going to do high speed you know education on this it's you like you figured it out quick because you wanted it done right the first time and I, I, that's, built I've had bad luck working with shops, so I just learned how to do it myself. I did it with the 80, trial and error, but I mean, I never built the supercharger in my life. Not only did I rebuild the supercharger on my 80, I did a video on it, and then I told my father, hey, I'm taking off, I'm gonna go test this out. He said, where are you going? He said, California. And he's like, you're an idiot, good luck. And it worked, it just always worked. Well, we'll put links in the description below on nice. these different mods so you guys can see that. Um, also, Richie's channel, follow him. He's got a big YouTube following. Oh, and I'll put the Instagram too. People gotta gotta follow this stuff. And if you're if you're into forerunners, take it from someone who's learnt, has done it, has been to the shops, has has put it through the paces. Yeah. Already how many miles you put on this thing? Forty. Forty thousand miles. In six months. Yeah. But from think about the gas. I, I did the math one day and I'm like, it's, it's I have to run super because I'm super I'm supercharged. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your gas is up there. Dude, it's 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 obscene. It's quick obscene. quick guess, twenty grand? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, all right, I must have missed a decimal. No. <laughs> no. So I mean I, I cook my own food. I give away I've hooked up so many people. I love doing that. People I meet, people homeless people I mean out here homeless, no problem. But I don't go out to dinner. I try to I try to keep it that's where all the expense comes from. Yeah, yeah. I don't drink none of that stuff. I just drink water. So, absolutely no. Like hotels. Uh, can you imagine if you're hoteling every night? At least you got yeah, that. You and, yeah. The Alu Cab is a good setup for. Uh, I almost switched to a Go Fast camper, but it just isn't quite as homey and heavy duty for the elements as the Alu Cab is, and it's not meant to be. It's a work of art. I'll tell you that they're beautiful, but. I wanted the weight savings because it would have took about 100 pounds off the top. But What would you say your top three favorite things are on this rig? The top, uh, the electrical system. The fact that it works. Yeah. Like it's supposed to because for a while it didn't. I had the solar panels wired incorrectly. It was only putting out 12 volts to the Red Arc and it was never charging my batteries. I, I rewired them. It's putting out 24 volts. I'm good to go. That's my favorite thing because you got power. Yeah. Um, the 37s I do like the 37s because you can get over anything with 35s but you can get over everything with 37s and it, I wasn't even sure it was a thing that I could do it on here but I did it oh yeah no, it makes do a some difference cutting, for some sure. trimming but he did a good job on it it looks good your t yeah, I, I was gonna say the the surgery that had to be done to make sure 37s fit because make no mistake You got to do some trimming big time. It's clean. Yeah, it is. He did a really nice job I was I didn't want the truck to look like it was chopped. Yeah, and uh, I guess the, the 37s the electrical system And then I guess my uh, My alley cab man spent a lot of time in there, you know so it's been, I mean, it's a beast. It's a beast, but they're no, they're no joke. They're legit. Yeah, it's little, not, it's not like the plastic ones. Like no, the, no. I had an issue where it leaked. Finally, it leaked. It happens. It's got rivets in the top. Alucab offered me the brand new model. They just came out with, I went to go get it done at OK four wheel drive and then changed my mind and said, let's just, I'm, I just finished building this. Let me take it on the road. If it happens again, then we'll talk. And it did happen again. So. I do have to talk to Al you can, but they've been pretty cool about it. Well, four years, and if you think about it, most people are going to camp five to ten nights a year max. I got overlanding. Like, you, you've got miles on the, got, on this camp. I, it was like eleven hundred, like over a thousand in that. So I use it. Wow, You're, you know, Bonvoy has the uh, you know hundred nights a, a year gold package or gold elite right, or platinum. Right, yes, You're yes, the yes. Alucab yes. platinum member. Yes. <laughs> points out the wazoo well let's do hey, one one final walk quick, around here real quick oh yeah these I've, are cool i've recently discovered that some shops don't want to put these in because they heard that these leak i tried to make these leak at home with a power washer and after thirty thousand, these have never leaked once and i installed them these v-lox gull wings are awesome man i All had right. one the 80 i wanted them here because every time you close the back the minute you close the back you forgot something so anything I would forget is right here. My batteries for my vape, everything, all my charging is right here. I can access everything, first aid, everything else is right down here in the side pocket, just like in the 80 series. So these don't leak. 
Well, sir, some of these products too, I'll have Richie send us links to go okay. to those companies and you guys can check it out. And did, do you have a video on how to install that? I do. Okay. I do. Well, I, also, I can also show you how not to install it. <laughs> I Don't do. try to take the windows out when it's 10 degrees out. It doesn't, it's, not, it's never going to happen. Do it on a balmy warm day. Yes, because they exploded comically. And then the snorkel? It's legit. Just gives you uh, good airflow. You find it's it it does. doing the it, job. It works well. And the one scary thing is I had the TRD Pro air box. I had the AFE air box. I ordered three of them because nobody could tell me, including Magnuson, they couldn't tell me how to get from the supercharger to the snorkel. Okay. That was the whole thing. I'm like, dude, I already got a snorkel. I'm not going to unsnorkel the truck. I'll have a huge hole. This actually worked with a little bit of tweaking. So... I did an install video on that. I haven't put them up, but I will. Okay. Because I hadn't done a walk around video yet, you know? If you look at the description and there's a video missing, revisit it again. It'll be added. Or there you go. do yourself a favor, follow Richie, Joe, Break, Overlander yeah, they're coming. on YouTube. Yeah, they're coming. Sweet. All right, Jamie. I got to tell you, it was a pleasure. I'm so glad I met you. I've been following you for a long time. and um, well, I've been for, following you for quite a while now. How long have you been up on YouTube? YouTube, I got it. I went on YouTube when I got Green Machine, my FJ40, yep. so uh, 2020. All right, so I've been following since 2020 because yeah. I saw that truck and I'm like, that is sick. That's the one you traded? No, no, hell no. Okay, okay, I got okay. I, a red one, yeah. Right. I had two FJ, because I had an FJ40 with a 5.7 liter, that's Green Machine, uh, my keeper, and I wanted to experience what the actual factory engine was like, and it was wanting power yes. i mean we're talking 1974 hey, made them. Hey, you yeah. wanna, it was the 1f you want to put a twin turbo on them and get a thousand horsepower or you want to get a million miles out of them you yeah, know there's, exactly. there's, a, there's a trade we're americans man we got to go fast everything's got to go fast <laughs> burra it's got to it. 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 have power that's it all right well this thing is sweet if you have questions that we kind of you saw something here and you don't know um, don't ask me. I don't know. This is not my rig. This is Richie's rig. So <laughs> go to his go to his YouTube and ask away. Um, he's always accommodating, and uh, you know it's it's you know Toyota guys. We have a passion for this stuff. So uh, any questions you have, um, fire away. All right, give his uh, YouTube a follow. Also follow his Instagram. Link will be in the description below. And Richie, it's been a pleasure. Anytime, brother. Love Anytime. the rig. Next, we got to go hit the trail, man. That's it. All right. That's it. Well, I'll let you sign off because you have your patented sign off. Yeah. So, Richie from Jailbreak, Jamie from Cruising the Land, we are out.